1859, Charles Darwin's theory of evolution ignited a controversy that still rages today. The debate erupted in 1925 with the Scopes Monkey Trial, called the most riveting trial of the century by the New York Times, it represented the debate that had been building up for almost a century, the clash of two cultures and the most renowned lawyers of the century. Although the trial itself was a short-term failure for the evolutionists, the debate it sparked led to an ultimate success for ever-changing science. Ask most people about what was the outcome of the Scopes trial, they would say that it was a, a victory for evolutionary biology, even though the trial itself represented uh, a loss in that he was found guilty. Charles Darwin developed the theory of evolution, presenting it to the public in his Origin of the Species, sparking the controversy. By the 1920s, after seeing ancient human fossils from Africa, many Americans had begun to accept the evolution theory, but not everyone. Genesis, the first chapter of the Bible, states that God created all life in six days and that life hasn't changed since. The Fundamentals, a series of pamphlets published in 1910, described this view and broadcasted it to the public. Fundamentalists felt threatened by evolution. They believed that it would twist and corrupt their children's minds, turning them away from religion. The leader of this group, William Jennings Bryan, former congressman and secretary of state, would later become the lead prosecution lawyer of the Scopes trial. Creationists were strongest in the rural towns and countryside of the South, known as the Bible Belt. The famous trial took place in the small rural town of Dayton, Tennessee, population 1,800, nestled in the Cumberland Mountains. Dayton was in the heart of the Bible Belt and supported Bryan strongly. On January 21, 1925, Representative Butler proposed a law known as the Butler Bill to the Tennessee House of Representatives. This law prohibited the teaching of any theory that denies the story of the divine creation of man as taught in the Bible and to teach instead that man has descended from a lower order of animals. On March 21, 1925, Tennessee Governor Austin P.A. signed the Butler Bill making it the first law to ban the instruction of evolution in the United States. On May 4th, the American Civil Liberties Union, or ACLU, ran an article in a Chattanooga newspaper looking for a Tennessee teacher who was willing to test the Butler Bill in the courts. The next day, town leaders in Dayton read the article and decided to bring the case to Dayton to help raise the town's struggling economy. <laughs> They asked John Scopes, substitute high school science teacher and football coach, to violate the Butler Law. On May 7, 1925, John Scopes was arrested just six weeks after the bill was passed. Dayton prepared for the trial with an almost carnival-like atmosphere. 5,000 people flooded into town, bringing with them merchants, preachers, and booths filled with Bibles, toy monkeys, and hot dogs. Meanwhile, two giants prepared for battle, Clarence Darrow for the defense and William Jennings Bryan for the prosecution. Darrow had lost before he started due to the beliefs already in place in Dayton, but the debate had begun. The Scopes trial began on Friday, July 10, 1925 in the Rhea County Courthouse with a prayer requested by the judge John Ralston. More than 800 people squeezed into the sweltering room wanting to witness a debate they knew would change history. As the first jury trial broadcasted live to the public, people around the country listened to the trial on the radio. On July 12th, Darrow objected to opening the trial with a prayer each day, but was overruled by the judge. It was obvious after a few rounds that the jury would be unanimously hot for Genesis. The most Mr. Darrow could hope for was to sneak in a few bold enough to declare publicly they would have to hear the evidence before condemning him. On July 15th, two boys from Scope's class testified that he taught them evolution and Judge Ralston overruled the motion to have the Butler Law declared unconstitutional. On July 20th, the defense called William Jennings Bryan their only witness to testify as a biblical expert. 
After much prodding, Brian confessed that the Bible shouldn't always be taken literally. From the press's point of view, Darrow used science and logic to trump religion. But 11 of the 12 jurors attended church regularly and believed Brian's literal interpretation of the Bible to be the truth. Brian's testimony was cut short by the judge who believed in creationism and his testimony was stricken from the record. After only nine minutes of deliberation, the jury declared John Scopes guilty and the judge fined him $100, which the ACLU offered to pay for him. John Scope said his intent was to State versus John Scopes was a failure for the evolutionists in July 1925, but the later successes have overwhelmed the immediate outcome of the trial. In 1926, the ACLU appealed the trial to the Tennessee Supreme Court. On January 17, 1927, the Supreme Court overruled the conviction on a technicality. However, the Butler Bill was not unconstitutional because it did not violate the 14th Amendment. The law didn't require creation to be taught, just prohibited evolution. The justices closed the case quickly, stating, We see nothing to be gained by prolonging the life of this bizarre case. The Scopes trial dominated front pages around the globe causing people around the world to debate it. Newspaper stories were against the fundamentalists, causing them to lose popularity. As H. L. Mencken stated, the story of Adam and Eve. There's no But the debate's consequences were far from over. In 1926, Mississippi became the second state to ban evolution, and Arkansas followed in 1928. However, George William Hunter published a new copy of the textbook formerly used in Dayton to teach science called A New Civic Biology. This 1927 textbook touched briefly on evolution. A new era had been born. In 1955, the play Inherit the Wind, based on the Scopes Monkey Trial, opened on Broadway. In a review of the play, the New York Times described the Scopes Trial as After the Soviet Union launched the Sputnik satellite in 1957, the United States began to promote science education and biology classes started devoting more time to evolution. The creationists were enraged. In the 1970s, they protested for equal time and balanced treatment in classrooms, arguing that evolution was only one theory. In 1973, Tennessee passed a law requiring equal emphasis on all theories of the origin of man. This law was declared unconstitutional two years later. The tide had turned for the evolutionists. Creationism has lost in every major U.S. federal court case in the last 40 years. On May 17, 1967, the Butler Law, which Scopes had originally violated, was revoked by Tennessee. In 1981, Act 590 passed in the Arkansas Legislature, again promoting equal treatment. But in January of 1982, Act 590 was overruled when creation science was ruled religion, not science, and therefore could not be taught in public school classrooms. The Scopes Monkey Trial launched a debate that forced the world to teach evolution in public schools. It brought an alternative to their religious explanation of the origin of life broadening science education. The debate over evolution sparked other trials that questioned religion, such as Aguilard v. Edwards in 1986 and Kitts Miller v. the Dover Area School District in 2004. The Scopes trial changed science education forever, teaching children science instead of religion. The debate and its consequences changed the way science and religion are viewed around the globe, bringing an ultimate success for evolution and science education. The evolutionary biologists lost the battle but won the war. Take good